As we have covered many times in the past, ancient Egypt is the center of proof revolving around many different strange answers to the history of humanity and how we came to be. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be attempting to tackle some of these questions by looking at five ancient Egyptian artifacts that Egyptologists can't explain. Jewelry and Weapons Made from Iron Throughout Egyptian mythologies and legends, there are numerous records that detail the Egyptian gods providing many gifts to humanity and to the then reigning pharaohs of Egypt. Many of these gifts range from animals, such as the domesticated cat, to weapons and daggers made out of special materials. Oddly enough, evidence of this was found when archaeologists began to notice that iron weapons could be found in tombs that predated the Iron Age by over 200 years, as well as iron jewellery that was dated around 3200 BC that were discovered back in 1911 from two different tombs in an ancient Egyptian cemetery. This became a mystery as the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun was also found to be surrounded by a large collection of iron weapons including a specially crafted iron dagger dating to be generations before the beginning of the Iron Age. The ancient aliens community speculated that perhaps these iron weapons were the gifts referenced in ancient Egyptian myths that were crafted by the gods and that perhaps they were forged from materials found in space. Oddly enough, when researchers began testing the weapons as well as old Egyptian jewellery for any additional information, they found strange tracings of non-terrestrial isotopes in the materials. In an effort to better understand the creation of these strange weapons, archaeologists and Egyptologists sent in samples of the weapons and jewellery to undergo further testing to find out any additional information surrounding the weapons. These test results found that not only were these daggers filled with a variety of different minerals impossible to craft, but that the composition of the materials matched those found in meteorites and not found on the planet Earth. This has left many experts scratching their heads as to how this could have occurred given the large amounts of meteorites they would have needed to harvest the material from that would not have burned up in the atmosphere and the quality of the weapons and jewellery that was produced. The Discovery of the Saqqara Birds Although the artifact is rejected by Egyptologists as being that of a legitimate artifact under the guise that it was very common in the old days of Egypt for children to possess intricately carved wooden toys not much different to toys found today. Interestingly enough, the discovery of the Saqqara artifact puts many ideas into question on whether or not the object was that of a toy or evidence of ancient aircraft that possibly existed during 200 BCE. In an 1898 excavation at the Pad de Ayman tomb, located in the town of Saqqara, Egypt, was discovered strange bird-shaped artifacts made out of sycamore wood and incredibly preserved. These artifacts depict a bird first at the front, however the rest of the body seems similar in design to a modern-day charter plane rather than a bird. Located atop the bird appears to be one single large wing, commonly seen in modern tail dragger planes, whereas the back shows what appears to be a similar design to a rudder that flattens out at the back in a vertical position. Further evidence of ancient Egyptian gods wielding advanced technologies is the fact that the bird face used for the Saqqara bird is that of a falcon, an image commonly used to depict many of the Egyptian gods and their power. Further evidence was established when aerodynamics expert Simon Sanderson tested an exact replica model of the carved bird in a modern wind tunnel. Even without a tailplane, rudder or flaps, the model generated four times the glider's own weight in lift, proving indefinitely that even without the use of modern-day equipment, scaled up, the carved image could glide on its own. When Simon Sanderson added a stabilizing tailplane to the carved wooden figure and tested it in a flight simulator, it was able to fly quite well and control with ease that rivals in comparison to many aircraft built today. In his paper, Simon wrote that, quote, modern technology has proved beyond all doubt that it could have flown, end quote. Despite this substantial evidence and research, many experts claim Simon Sanderson 
as forging results or even go as far as claiming that perhaps the wooden bird is nothing more than an elaborate hoax placed there during its discovery. The Ancient Pyramid of Giza One of the biggest discoveries that helped to launch the careers of many self-proclaimed experts in the study of Egypt and its ancient culture was the discovery that the pyramids of Giza were constructed by the pharaoh Khufu, of which puts the pyramids at a certain date of construction and time. The problem with this discovery is that the only evidence of the name of the pharaoh referenced on the pyramid was an old carving in the Campbell's chamber that many believed could have been the cartouche of Khufu and his royal signature. As it later turned out, the carving was an obvious forgery, with the dating of the piece, the damage done to the piece, and even the incorrect spelling and carving of the cartouche being the smoking gun evidence that it was nothing more than Egyptologists looking to take on a false sense of fame and fortune with their published works. This has led to an incredibly large piece of history that has been completely wrong and given the fact that the majority of works in the modern day were built off of these ancient findings, it appears that the experts could have gotten it completely backwards. Not only is there physical and scientific evidence of the pyramids being much older, possibly even older than human civilization itself, but it appears that the Egyptian government has politicized this issue so that no other people and countries can lay legitimate land claim in the territories currently being of the organization of the Egyptian people. This has led many Egyptologists to reject true evidence of dating, references to the timeline of an actual reign of a pharaoh, and even the complete rejection of any ideas involving alternate explanations of construction, time frame, and even historical impacts. The Graves of Slaves For some unknown reason, the Egyptian government and the expert Egyptologists claim that there were never Semitic-speaking people or Hebrews of which that were enslaved in Egypt or throughout its history at any point in time. Quite obviously, these findings and claims directly contradict the stories of the Torah and the Christian Bible, of which many claim to be an effort made by the Egyptian government given their tensions with the Israeli government and against Christian organizations. Interestingly enough, the truth is that there is overwhelming evidence that Semitic-speaking people inhabited Egypt, including a direct reference to the Torah that specified a second pharaoh of whom was Hebrew and possibly the existence of Joseph in the time before Moses. In fact, by the late Middle Kingdom era, of which was roughly 3,700 years ago, the Semitic-speaking people had achieved the highest forms of power in Egypt in the form of the second pharaoh ruling the entire Lower Kingdom of Egypt, along with more than 27 scarabs found in Egypt, Canaan and Nubia confirming these changes in power. It also appears that evidence of these Semitic-speaking people were found in the discovery of a pit of Hebrews dated around the end of this reign, of whom were believed to have possibly been thrown into a mass grave similar to that commonly seen in the treatment of slaves. The Egyptian record then goes on to specify that Semitic-speaking people were banished when a strange and mysterious group known as the Hyksos came into power, showing that there is more than enough artifacts and evidence of the reign of a second pharaoh, the banishment of the Hebrew people and pits of mass graves that held Hebrew slaves. Although Egyptologists have not only completely refused to speak on the matter and find the evidence to be nothing more than an out-of-context belief that doesn't fit with their own, it is obvious that they have no way to explain the authenticity of these accounts and the biblical one. The Plague of Cyprian As the great Egyptian city of Luxor was being excavated with care and detail, the team came upon a strange discovery that did not seem to match the previously established timeline of the city and its population. According to the pottery discovered at the site, the ancient city of Thebes was well aware of many new Romans of whom were coming into the city around the time of 250 AD, of whom brought with them a terrible affliction. This affliction was then given the name of the Plague of Cyprian, as it appeared that the Roman Empire was greatly affected by this plague that would later go on to spread all throughout Egypt and possibly used as a strategic attack. 
Much of the pottery and the descriptions of the event even recalled the events similar to that of an attack speaking that the disease invaded every home and killed a large portion of the population. Although experts believe the event to have been a reference to the smallpox illness, this discovery seemed to directly contradict the expected population at the time and the believed growth of the city and the international trading hub it represented. Although it appears that Egyptologists today have found a way to account for this event, it seems as though the event was not referenced in any other city in Egypt, and that for some inexplicable reason, this was the only surviving account of the ravages of the disease and its origin, as well as giving a detailed account of the disease, its symptoms, and the spread through the Roman Empire. But what do you all think of these strange artifacts and findings that even expert Egyptologists are having an incredibly hard time trying to explain? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.